Hi everyone and welcome to IBTM Connect. My name is Hannah Brewer and I am the Conference Manager for the IBTM Portfolio. Everyone here hopes you are staying safe and well and thank you for being with us today. Connect is all about keeping you engaged and united as an industry as we work together to bring you the best possible content. Today we have Steph Berger, Managing Director of Vogue, joining us. Steph has over 19 years of experience in the mice industry in her current role as a conference consultant, crisis manager and event manager. Her focus is always on people. Helping people find viable solutions is a challenge she gladly accepts. Thank you for being here. Stay safe and please join me in giving a warm welcome to Steph. Thank you so much, Hannah. And um, yes, well, it's amazing to have all these people here. Um, as Hannah already said, I'm Steph. Um, I'm from Berlin, Germany. And over 19 years, I'm a conference consultant. And we run mainly for associations, conferences up to 20,000 packs. Um, I'm working in Europe, and I have been in already over 22 different European cities uh, working on conferences. Uh, next to it, I'm also a trainer and coach. And since 2017, uh, I'm a MICE crisis manager. And this is also the topic for today. As you can imagine, I have uh, a lot of experience running conferences, and uh, especially with this large number, uh, of course, you have all this incident and um, little critical situations or crises. And this is the reason why I'm also a crisis manager. Um, in 2020, we actually, of course, yeah, uh, we uh, planned a big mission. And um, to say it's a bit unfortunate, it's about uh, crisis management or COVID now, of course, triggers this topic very much. But our mission is that we do webinars and we also do uh, trainings. I want to make um, the mice industry, uh, all of you as teams, um, crisis ready. I believe uh, if you are prepared, you can much better coordinate and look into uh, crises. Um, and we will also train worldwide. Um, if you like to connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, we will uh, share um, in the future where we will have held these uh, trainings and webinars. And um, I learned uh, in a different webinar, uh, thanks uh, to um, Dahlia and Stefania at IB Team Co uh, Connect, um, how is the best to connect? And uh, if you have your cell phone and you like to uh, connect directly, uh, you just go to LinkedIn and you just um, going to search and you find this little scan code button and you uh, scan, you scan by barcode and then we are connected. At the end of this session, I also like um, to share um, my contact again and also um, how uh, you can get a tech list um, for post-COVID um, communications and crisis management. So we all understand that we are in a pandemic now. And um, it starts in China, and the curve is, has been very, very quick uh, that it uh, turned from, a pan, uh, from an epidemic to a pandemic. And so the pandemic is now worldwide. And when we look into this, for us, it's really important to understand what means a pandemic, but also uh, what means um, a disaster. Um, if you look into a disaster, um, this is also about um, the volcano or uh, a natural disaster. And both are very specific because it's not a crisis as a crisis 
um, this really there are the different governments are um, having organizations taking care of um, this and we as conference or event managers we cannot really um, deal with the pandemic. This is on a different authority uh, level. That we, of course, have an own crisis that occurs out of a pandemic or a disaster um, might be the result for us. Um, and saying this, it's really important. Um, at the moment, we have to wait when we can start again organizing our events. And of course, it has hit the entire world COVID. And we never thought that this would happen. But it's not only our industry, it's the entire world. Um, when we look into a disaster, um, there has been also for me um, a special version and this has been not clicking yeah um, 10 years ago um, the Icelandic volcano erupted and for me I was attending a, a conference in Vienna and uh, with 10,000 packs and the feeling to be helpless and not being able to assist and people have really stranded in Vienna and all around the world. This had a great impact on me, and this is why I'm also a crisis manager today. Going back to pandemic and also to the disaster, when we talk about crisis management, um, I think we need to define a specific point. Epidemic, pandemic, disaster. Um, this is something where I would like to encourage all convention bureaus, uh, the local authorities, and also the police, depending if you have a terror attack, for example, or a demonstration. This is not a pandemic uh, or disaster, but still I think this also goes into this direction where um, organizers uh, and agencies uh, need local support. Um, as mentioned before, we run uh, European conferences, so I'm not local in Spain, I'm not local uh, in UK. So we need your help, uh, support, and of course this support needs to be also uh, in cooperation with your local partners. And having this concept um, also, if you, if you are in a region where you have an earthquake, or if you're in a region with a hurricane, um, there should be something set up uh, from the local uh, government, from the local convention bureau. Um, and this should be a concept you should uh, talk and also provide uh, to your um, conference and uh, event organizers. So if we go into the crisis, um, a crisis, um, this is what uh, we are um, facing now. And um, the definition is that more an individual uh, or a group, um, a company. And um, in this way, we need to look into crisis uh, management. And now I would like just to go to our first poll. How many of your events have been cancelled by the COVID-19 pandemic? So one to five, six to 12, or over 12? So do we have the poll? 
Ooh. Oh, wow. Yes. We're all facing this, as you can see in this poll. And uh, me too. So me as an event organizer, um, I, I have seen the same. Um, I experienced the same. Um, in the beginning of March, I uh, also had um, two events still uh, running. Um, I had a cancellation. And now um, we also have an event um, that goes uh, digital and also does not need um, logistics. So, um, and this is really, as we said, a worldwide uh, crisis that hits us. And it's important that we now start to understand what we can uh, do and also what we can learn out of COVID-19. I would have loved to talk about today actually about my crisis management. And um, this is a concept we're working, uh, I've been working together with specialists because um, if you talk about classical crisis management, this is for banks, they have a lot of resources. Um, and what we have normally is that we have less resources. So we need to, uh, to work with our partners. And we also uh, have different stakeholders, like we have the venue, uh, we might work with a PCO, we might work with a D uh, DMC, and so we have different stakeholders that also may have a different interest in uh, if there's something happens. But the overall is we talk about reputation. So if our event, if we don't handle um, crisis situation uh, not uh, right for our participants and also for exhibitors, um, this will be uh, hit our reputation. So that's our biggest aim, um, to uh, really look into what we can do uh, to protect our reputation. Um, today, we talk about um, crisis communication. And um, every crisis is a crisis communication. And so therefore, um, this is also uh, nowadays with social media something where we definitely know um, that we need to be very careful um, and monitor situations. And um, I have been talking at IBTM uh, in Barcelona um, last uh, winter uh, about social media. And I just want to quickly go through a bit social media. But if you are interested in uh, IBTM, uh, Connect has also on-demand videos. And there's one of uh, um, crisis management and about um, social media uh, false news and um, everything about this topic. Um, if we go through this quickly, uh, it's very important that you have an in-time reaction. And I could see um, in, in uh, up-to-date uh, COVID-19 that uh, if people actually start uh, to question, um, do you postpone your event or not, then you need to react. Then you are already quite uh, late. And it's important um, that you don't ignore this kind of uh, questions. And um, having said this, uh, it's important that you uh, monitor um, your website, uh, your social media at all times, and uh, especially uh, everyone uh, is interested to know how you move on with your event, um, you should really look um, into uh, personal uh, answers and um, to even have maybe also a chat hotline on your website. Um, social media is very emotional. And saying this, um, we all can be a receiver. We can uh, send that. We can share. So uh, if we like things, we share this quickly. But uh, if we don't like something, we also share. And therefore, it's one of the highest risk in communication. Um, this is a German uh, virologist. And um, he was uh, on the 27th of February in a German uh, TV show. And uh, he mentioned a population that has been 
fluctuating between fear and cheerfulness for a few days. So remember, this is the beginning of uh, COVID-19, uh, and uh, this had been before the German lockdown. Um, I found this very interesting because um, at that time, uh, I just mentioned before, um, I had uh, cancellations or starting to have uh, events canceled here in Berlin. Um, and we also have been running uh, events. And it's so important um, that in crisis communication, uh, we need to be very careful what we say. And I heard people were, they said, uh, we ignore the whole thing. Um, we, uh, it's hysteric, it's just the flu. Uh, and I also could see that there were people who said, oh, well, I, I have a real concern. Uh, what should we do? Um, how do we do um, follow this hygiene uh, uh, reasons and stuff like this? So this is so important that in, um, in crisis communication, we not doing this. So for us, personal opinions and assumptions really taboo. So you should not do this. If you share this privately, it's fine. But if you um, share anything on your company account, um, this should really be looking into facts and figures. Because we also could see, you know, all the people that also said, oh, it's just the flu. Um, now we do have a lockdown. So, and therefore, um, a crisis is also very dynamic, and it can spread in all kinds of directions. So we need to be careful what we say, and therefore we always um, only share what we have on facts and figures. When we look into bad news, so we need to accept bad news stays bad news. Um, to understand this, uh, we cannot start to do or to make a solution if um, we don't accept that there are bad news. And also this I have seen that people really ignore uh, doing anything on their websites. And again, I recommend you really much um, we need to accept there is this issue at the moment, and this is COVID-19. And from there, we need to start now to uh, find solutions. And having said this, um, crisis management is really accepting the problem. We don't hide the problem, and we start to find solutions. So for crisis communication, uh, I recommend to be very transparent um, on all stages. Um, I would recommend for COVID-19 now to actually, if you have an event um, in August, September, November, December, and, e uh, and even December, um, you already can start to have a button with COVID-19 um, it shows that you care of your participants, and this is, you don't hide, because we all know there could be a second wave, there could be a third wave, and um, I think people recognize if you take care and take a, a topic very serious. And depending on where you are, um, your government will also um, have different regulations and restrictions. And for example, we have a restriction in Germany um, that we might run events only um, end of October. And so if you have anything beforehand, because it's not a clear statement from the government at the moment for all the events. Um, and of course, people ask. So I think it's really important to communicate that you are on the topic, that you're discussing all the different opportunities. Uh, and this is something we can already uh, share with our participants. And again, we don't lie, we're really looking into the facts. So only what you know from your government uh, and what you can say, um, you should uh, include in your communication. 
Um, and this is what we said before. Um, it's very important uh, that you don't promise anything. Um, it's also like, um, especially with technical problems, there is a technical problem and you have to communicate this and then you cannot fix this problem. So it's better to say on at this uh, stage, on this actual moment, we, have, we do have this and this information. So I will go to the second poll. Did you have a crisis management strategy before COVID-19? Yes or no? I have learned that this quite often has been not integrated in um, event concept, but I also believe it's also, you know, we talk now about going digital, uh, and I think both like digital but also uh, crisis management um, should be a part of our um, after COVID-19 uh, uh, journey. And so, this is important um, that we find a structure also together, just as I said, also with the pandemic, um, that conference uh, convention office also do um, have a concept for their clients because most of the clients, if you run conferences abroad, uh, you are not um, local in the region, so you need the support and the help um, from the city. So the poll is not coming up. So as just mentioned, this is very important um, to to really look into a crisis management strategy for your team and also for your partners. Just moving forward. We know that there have been many, many events cancelled all over the world. And I just want to um, go into one event. This stays for many events. It's not something I would say um, that it's really um, only this one. I choose it because it's one of the first one uh, in Europe that had been uh, cancelled. It's a um, previous uh, Mobile World uh, Conference. And uh, I really liked what they did on communication. Um, because they they started to say that they're really monitoring the um, actual uh, situation that um, that um, they are um, that they looked into several measurements um, to include. Um, they worked uh, with the World Health Organization and the government uh, together. So if you check on their press site, you see the full information. And I really liked it because there were many things uh, inside um, that are important um, for a good crisis communication. And so we also, uh, they also sit together with the venue. And this is actually also uh, mentioned uh, in their whole uh, script. Um, so we work with Sierra de Barcelona to ensure sufficient sanitizing products and so on and so on. Um, they also looked into, um, when they mentioned the World Health Organization, they also mentioned that they uh, looked into the registration of the Chinese government and, of course, the Spanish Health Authority. Um, I thought that is a real great uh, statement. Um, and they also were showing a solution, so they also showed um, what they do for the cleaning uh, and 
um, what they do on site and how they prepare their um, exhibitors as well. Um, so I thought that was a real great uh, start uh, for um, sadly the cancellation of the event. ITB in Berlin, uh, that's where I'm from, and um, this had been also um, cancelled, and um, we had an event cancelled uh, during IT, ITB for 200 people for an uh, evening networking uh, event. And uh, of course, I was viewing uh, and watching the news carefully, and every um, time um, something new. Of course, I double check because it was really important um, for us. And um, what happened is that they came out with the news um, to the German uh, main news. And um, this is very typically. So if we talk about um, this um, big event, what we have now, um, this is for um, for the press, for the media, very important. And what happened here is also, for example, if we have an air crash um, and um, or any any terror attack, um, you will find that it comes most time uh, at the main news. It comes out. And what we can learn of of it is that. Everyone comes out with the same communication guideline. That means that the main TV target show um, that all journalists just before got the final information of ITB. And to do this, you need to connect and have a communication guideline. And you need one communication channel. And this idea we actually can use for our own crisis communication. So the client, the venue, and the city comes. So you all need to have the same information and the same script. So if one of these guys do uh, go out on a different time or going out with a different wording, you might have a shitstorm because you don't share the same information. So therefore, this is so important um, that you have one communication wording um, with everyone you work for. I also like to share another um, idea. And if we go in here, um, this statement are really uh, good as well. Um, so we're monitoring the situation around COVID-19. Uh, we line up with the Public Health England and World Health Organization. Uh, we advise uh, from if the advice from the UK authorities does change, we will act upon it and immediately update the industry. So these are uh, statements um, pretty well to use because they show already a very good idea um, with facts and uh, they give good information. Um, the second part of this is that um, they also um, have some words for the affected people. And we mentioned before that um, social media as well is very emotional and people are affected. So therefore it's so important um, that part of your communication uh, gives also back this feeling. And um, when we look into um, a good crisis communication, there is always a lawyer in between, but this person is just looking for facts, facts, facts but it does not um, show the emotion. And of course, people are affected. It's not only you as the organizer, but also your participants are affected. And they want to see how you feel um, and what you do for them. And affected is the right word. And being affected, um, it's 
it's something if you don't communicate right um, and you don't understand that there is the other side, they will uh, get back with uh, bad comments. Um, this is just an idea on um, uh, some nice uh, comments that um, is um, really selected for this uh, for this uh, affected and being emotional. And this I also like to share um, with this checklist because maybe you cannot read this uh, as much. Um, but these are really, really nice. And it shows that many events have been affected, and they show their emotions, and they also show how hard they have worked um, and how difficult the decision they had to make to cancel the event has been for them. So I have another poll, poll for you. Are you working on post-COVID-19 strategy? Yes, we are. No, we plan to. No, we are not. When we look into strategies, um, crisis management is um, quite heavy on papers, on uh, checklists, and all this kind of stuff. And we started to work on a very good concept to make it very easy. And I really would like to, um, to share this uh, information with you uh, on the next uh, few slides. I'm not sure if this poll comes up, so I'm just moving on. So, for the uh, strategy, I mentioned before I'm a I'm coach and trainer, and I'm a systemic uh, trainer. And a very easy way is you could adapt for all your strategies is to ask questions. Um, as a coach, you just ask your cli uh, client uh, questions. And the questions would be, um, what are the risks if you um, run your event? Uh, what are the measurements um, you need to integrate if you run your event? Um, what are the measurements for uh, registration? So um, what have you also learned um, during the COVID-19? I mean, if we go to a supermarket, uh, we have this uh, system uh, with one meter, 50 to two meters. We, um, so we, we collected all these ideas. So be creative and um, understand that if you only ask you the right questions, it's also for the communication. Um, I always say I turn around. And I sit down with the people that are affected. And then I think, does this information trigger me what I read um, there? And for the my scenario, um, I think uh, for post-COVID, we really look into three different scenarios at the moment. So one is a performing and um, performing could be also digital uh, performing. So um, this is at the moment, of course, a good idea. Um, how far this really goes to uh, change to a complete uh, digital world, I don't uh, know. But if we perform on, on a local perspective, we need to really work with the convention um, bureau, we, we need to work with the local authorities because we don't know when restrictions are stopped, when we can fly, 
uh, when we can travel to a different uh, country and also to understand what happened uh, when uh, you plan to perform but then something happened and there will be a second wave. So these are all questions uh, we need uh, to ask ourselves for uh, preparing for a crisis management strategy. And having said this, the next one is postponing. And um, also here, of course, we still have the risk that this postponing event might not run. We also have to think about cancellation. And everything, every strategy you take, you need to communicate. And I don't know when your next event is, but we have now the time to prepare these three scenarios. We have to ask us all the different kind of questions, and we need to develop with our partners together a crisis management concept. And again, most of us do not have a lot of resources, but I really, really tell you, we are all together in this situation and we should help each other. And uh, an event can not be done by one person. So you have experts on board, so let's work with your experts on the event. I mean the location, I mean the city, uh, the convention bureau, um, I, I mean your PTO, your partners, your agency. Um, this is so important that we do this together. But to, to start with, I think these are the three scenarios we need to think uh, about. So, Saying this, um, saying this, no crisis is like another. And having this work on these three scenarios, it's important um, that you keep the scenarios. And when you have created that, put them in your crisis management library. And we know a crisis is never like another crisis. And if you have already plan B, uh, it does not mean that plan B is working, but maybe uh, plan B has already items that you can use for plan C. And maybe it's not even a scenario you were uh, having in your bucket, but there is another one you have in your bucket, and this could help you. And working on scenarios makes you very clear what you need. Crisis management is there. You need to react fast. You need to make decisions fast. And um, a, a crisis overruns you if you don't lead this crisis. And therefore, I really recommend you. We have learned already the last two months. We have learned a lot, all of us. And use this time to look into what you really have learned and how you can use this time now to think now about this communication. And I could also see that um, communications went out before um, just the word on the website, yeah, this event is canceled. Information will be followed soon. This is not the right uh, step. The right step is to say we have cancelled, these are our facts. And um, this information, for example, just came out half an hour later. So you could have wait uh, this half an hour to spread your full communication. And to write a communication in a crisis, you have no chance. So um, at the moment, there are also many statements around. And uh, I just uh, showed a few. So therefore, um, you have a good uh, point to research and to look uh, in the simple strategies. Um, what you need to do is to look into a risk analysis. And again, for me, you don't need a big risk analysis. It's really the question, what can be the risk if we postpone? What can be the risk if we run the event? Um, and to understand 
um, which kind of measurements do you need um, that you lower your risk? Yeah. So which measurements we have to create? And again, my idea would be also to look in each detail. Um, so we look into registration. We look into speaker. Uh, we look into the sponsor. We look into the exhibitors. So um, if you look into all this uh, de detail for everyone, what are the risks? And uh, also, if you have created the risk and the measurement for it, uh, what you need to communicate. Work together. This is so important. And again, we are not alone, and we need to do this together. And crisis management is a big topic. And now to start to create everything to be good prepared when we all, after lockdown, are able to run events, uh, again, um, this is important that you work with your partner together. And also, um, I just mentioned that we also um, have a conference that goes uh, now digital. I have also a conference that's uh, postponed. And so it's really advisable to have a, a chat line on your um, website for questions so people want to be treated um, good. Um, you should have uh, a complete uh, web page with facts. And again, I would recommend you also to look with your partner. So um, depending on what uh, specialist you have on board, maybe you have one specialist for your uh, exhibitors. And this person is the expert also to think about what could be the exhibitor, uh, what could be the questions. Um, maybe your registration team is the expert for what could be um, the questions um, if people say, oh, you postpone and I have to, um, is my ticket still valid? I feel not comfortable to come to the conference. Um, can, um, can I get back my money? Um, for the digital one, if, um, um, is this the same fee uh, like I paid for the face-to-face um, -face conference? Um, so you can see we have lots of questions. And one person or your marketing team cannot do this because they are not the specialists of the specific uh, topic. So get your suppliers, get your team together, and ask for each section what you offer um, what would be um, frequent asked questions that your um, partners and participants would uh, ask? Be a decision maker. Um, this is so important because we have um, people are really tend to not making decisions. And again, I have seen on website that um, we made a decision. Um, to postpone or going digital or something like this, and we get back uh, with Plan B um, in a short time. So, but if you don't get back in a short time and it takes you weeks, uh, it's not good. So, before you make your decision, um, you need to have your uh, place B in uh, in place because it really also um, you have less work if you have done this before. Once again. You have now the time to do all these different um, steps. If you cannot make the decision in time, it's also um, to integrate the steps that you say uh, we're monitoring and uh, we're sitting together. Uh, this is transparent. We're sitting together and we're finding a solution, but we have not made our final decision, and this is fair, but not um, but if you have a lot of participants asking on social media, you need to react. And this is transparent that you don't have your decision. I mean, everybody is, knows that we're working on decisions at the moment and what we do. And you can share this um, also with um, your audience. So start now, please, and look into what you have learned till now.
So you need to look into a stakeholder analysis. Um, you need to look into internal and external communication. And important is for the internal communication that your employees, they go first. I also heard from people that um, they have been informed um, also from the website or from the press and it's not nice. So they're part of your team and uh, maybe if you don't have that in your contract you should have uh, a declaration. Uh, it's important and if you have this you can uh, involve everyone and don't only involve a few and not, um, not the entire team. So. It's important. I understand, again, you don't also look into what information you give, but you need to give them updates. This is important. Um, I also um, integrate, and this is uh, my uh, special for me, um, to integrate in this communication, uh, in the internal communication, um, I integrate venues and partners, um, exhibitors and speakers, um, and also the external suppliers uh, like um, catering um, hostess partner. And when you go out with your decision, um, it's important, especially also if we talk about this team, um, you want to meet them again after COVID-19. And it's not nice if you inform them um, on your website. So you need an, a, a personal approach. and.
gehalten. Yes, hello. Hello. wird gehalten. Ihre Verbindung wird gehalten. Ihre Verbindung wird Hallo? Oh, I'm back. Whoa, what an experience. So, uh, I'm so sorry. Um, what happened? Um, plan B works now to dial back. And we just have a few seconds left. I'm so sorry. Um, please, um, let... So, you can send me all your questions you have. And um, I also would like just trying to get some of the polls, um, some of your questions. And uh, if you need anything else, um, I also can explain or write a little thing what, what I meant for the last part. Um, so please connect with me on, on LinkedIn um, and also share your, um, change, uh, your email and if you have done that and you also enter a checklist just as a code, um, I send you more information. So I look into the questions. Do you think that virtual events are a good solution to go on with our business after COVID-19? Um, Yes and no. I think it's uh, um, it's something we um, we definitely will do. And why not integrate also 
virtual uh, events into face-to-face uh, -face events, and especially also, I mean, we started already having webcasts and um, to offer this to a wider audience. Um, so I think, um, yes, uh, of course, uh, it will be a good solution, and it's the future and also for generations. But I still believe that we definitely um, going on with face-to-face -face, uh, because we all see the technical thing. It's not like, you know, it's all different and I really believe face-to-face uh, -face will never uh, die. Um, in crisis communication time less timeline is of of the essence. Would you recommend waiting until you have all relevant information or put out your communication even if not all information is available yet? Um, again, um, being transparent and um, we have always the one point to say um, that of course um, you need to be transparent about the information, but of course there are also uh, steps in between and you need to see and to monitor your audience but if they need more information, you also could say, um, we are still in the process uh, to get this information. Um, one point is very important um, on your website, and I haven't seen that in uh, communication from actually um, from um, all communications. Um, you have to include the date, but also the time. So people can follow if you also have a new update. And if something is really um, a crisis running really fast, and then you might have even on one day more um, updates uh, to put to inform. So that's my recommendation. So what is the role of social media in crisis situation? Yes, I mean it's everything and it hits you from all the sides and you might have shit storms and you might also have to consider where these people come from. So we look into cultures, we look also in, um, in time, um, so in different uh, time areas, and this is important that you react and monitor. And if you have a real crisis, I also recommend you really to um, look for a company uh, who can monitor this for you. Um, use them when you need them, but you will not handle this by yourself. This will be, if you have a shitstorm, this will be magic. Um, yeah. I think we, um, I think we um, have all this, um, this questions and um, we will keep them and I would love maybe to share this uh, also with everyone so I can answer all these uh, questions. What should I tell my employees during a crisis? Um, the truth. Um, it's important that you um, tell, I mean, we all in this situation, so if you, if you talk about COVID-19, you're all in this situation and um, I think it's good to sit together and see what everybody thinks and how you work together uh, to come out of this crisis. And you are a team, so your team is also interested to, um, to, to start working again, to, to earn money and therefore um, you need uh, to be transparent and also to find solutions. I'm with my team very transparent and we do at the moment everything uh, to get uh, started and um, they all get the further steps also of my uh, clients so um, I'm very transparent on this and, and people will be happy if you do this.
There is a kind of same question if we can. I, I um, so I don't think video calls. I'm not the expert expert on this, but um, from the strategies, um, you have to consider definitely in Christman the digital solutions. And um, for for now, at the moment, this is really good. But I believe there is a time after COVID, and we already had uh, different pandemics, like um, the Spanish uh, flu, and people also survived. So, and there have been also changes after. And again, I would like, I myself, I think we need to integrate um, both uh, systems. And uh, I still think face-to-face -face, uh, will always uh, stay. What happens if you organize an event and attendees get infected by the virus and emerge into media or your name is associated uh, to the infection? Um, I have to say that in the beginning we had uh, different companies um, in the media and I felt very, very sad uh, for them to be part of it. Uh, but nowadays everybody is facing this issue, so um, I don't think uh, it's the the, how do you call it, but important is, first of all, we are not, if you have done everything right and you have the um, instructions of uh, hygiene, um, the cleaning, if you have done everything and you work together with the health authority in your country, um, I think you have done everything. And you, of course, this is a big thing. You need to train um, not only your own team. You need to train the hostess, the security, um, the tech, um, the catering. You, you might have new um, catering measurements. There will be so many things. And this is also something you need to work. A, if you are an agency or a client, you should announce that, talk to your um, location, uh, talk to um, the country, what kind of measurements and how you can work on that. And um, if you are a location, you also need uh, to inform your clients on uh, which steps you take um, for all of this. And of course, this measurement might be also that you need to protect yourself, that you also give out uh, regulations, like at the moment we have um, this mask, this face mask. Um, and of course, if a participant uh, comes without this mask, they might not enter your uh, location or your venue. So, but this is where we need to work on. And again, you need to work with your own government on this. Can you please share this presentation? Yes, I can. So I think we mainly run out of time, and I'm more than happy to answer all these questions more. And um, again, it's so important, use your time now, please. Uh, use your time going into the strategies and ask the right question for yourself. Uh, turn being your exhibitor, turn into your participant, and see what is the need on information. And again, if you reuse your partners, like if you go digital, I'm sure you can reach your partners for the chat hotline, for um, updating all this information. There's so many things uh, to do. And really, if you have done this, you will be also prepared for the future for other incidents and crises. And again, I'm so relaxed to be a crisis manager because I am so quick now making solutions, looking for solutions, and um, I only can recommend um, doing crisis management. It's a lot of work in the beginning, and of course you can also organize a company for yourself, but there are so many out of information also in the internet and statements and collect that. And um, I know it's a lot of work, but 
it will be very good if you have done that and you feel much more comfortable. And therefore, um, you should come in front of the situation. Um, that's interesting. What would you say to an organization that is conservative and so careful not to commit a mistake that they never reacted in time? Um, I would say they have bad crisis management um, because um, if you have people around or uh, journalists, um, you know, if you lie, um, they will be not your friends. And um, it's important to say you made a mistake, but you are you are trying to fix that. You do everything that this not happen again. And I think people think that's very positive. But if you hide this information and more people, and again, if you go back to social media, people share this information uh, and their feelings, um, then you might have even a bigger crisis. And uh, in the beginning of the presentation, I actually mentioned that it's all about reputation. And you need to be careful that your reputation will be still going on. Look for another question. Um, would you say the might industry will depend on how airlines resume uh, flights? If yes, how can we plan events in the future? Um, that's uh, a good and not easy uh, question. I think the airlines will be one point. Um, I also think that, uh, of course, I mean the borders are closed. It's not only the um, the airlines. It's it's different measurements at the moment the different uh, governments have. And even, you cannot say, I mean, even it might be that um, that uh, UK opened something, but uh, then Spain just uh, opened the borders, anything like this, or Asia locked the borders and people, exhibitors cannot fly, participants cannot fly. So um, how it starts, um, I think it's a difficult um, question. There will be a lot of measurements and there will be a long way back to this normal operation. And therefore, again, we can return to that, yes, I think a mix out of face-to-face -face and also online uh, might be a good uh, solution. And again, the generation will change and um, digital will be in the future different. But again, face-to-face -face will be my favorite. There is one more question. What health approach would you take in these uh, unpredicted times while still lots of companies are putting out the fire and trying to survive? Um, this is a question I would be not um, the right person to answer, but um, I think you should prepare everything, or this is what we do, we prepare everything for the time uh, after, and I think there will be also soon a way that it's more accepted that we have COVID and that we also have to move 
um, on, and therefore uh, I think it would be more and more common that people start marketing um, their events um, and their ideas. And we should not give up, and we should not um, we should not uh, be afraid because we're all together here, and we can do this together. So I think the time is now uh, running out. And uh, again, thank you so much for being part of this session. And I hope uh, this information could help you to start. Uh, and I know one hour is not very long, but um, it might uh, trigger you a little bit uh, to start your own uh, crisis communication and crisis management uh, strategies. Thank you, everyone. Uh, connect on LinkedIn, uh, if you like. And again, send me an email uh, or a message with your email. And I send you this checklist and anything else uh, you want to know. Thank you so much for being part of this uh, first edition webinar I ever uh, gave to the audience. Thank you. Stay connected and stay safe. And hope to see you all um, here at IBTM uh, World in Barcelona, I hope. There is already uh, a bit more a way out. I hope. I cannot tell. I cannot promise. But I would wish to see and meet all of you in Barcelona. Thank you.